Uh, hi everyone, my name is Jake. Um, I'm from ARDC, so um, it's a research club in Australia, for those of you who have heard of us. And um, yeah, so uh, maybe just as an icebreaker, just getting very early up here. How many people are running OVN? Thank you. How many people are thinking of running OVN? Thank you. Oh, okay. So if you're pleased to uh, paste my talk. Um, so uh, a bit about us. Um, we are a research club in Australia. And um, you know, the purpose of us is to provide competitive advantage to Australian researchers. Um, so we just not part of the research club. And um, we've been around for a while now. We started in 2012. And, um, and probably this is like the 12 years of us. And it has been the same club that we've been running since 2012. Um, a lot of people uh, can't upgrade, so they tear down and review. But ours is the same club, so it's the same one. Um, so, uh, a bit more about us. Uh, normally, all these slides are not important, but uh, I. There is some linkage to this. Um, so we are a federated cloud in a sense. Each research institution has uh, compute and storage at their own location. And um, we also run the uh, API at the central location. And when people request for VMs and other resources, they will get um, passed on to the availability zone at each uh, site. So the our kind of sites are listed there. Oh, by the way, can everybody hear me properly? Yes, I have a kind of section. Right. Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah. So a bit about us. Uh, in 2012, when we first started, uh, it was this thing called the Mother Group. Because everything was mobile. <laughs> the block storage was mobile. So uh, the demo we came to the user was the Mother Group. And then there was a new project in the user last bridge, so we were later. And uh, about 2016, we saw the SDN, there's a lot of SDNs. And we happened to choose a thing called some people might be familiar with it. Um, it's a pretty good software, but unfortunately, I think uh, after a while, uh, Sony bought them, and Sony uh, bought the company, and then Sony didn't to get anymore. So this was deprecated and then entirely dropped. As a plugin in the cloud. And then we had to migrate. So um, at the time we were looking around and we decided to just to go to OVN because that's the upstream of the stuff. Okay, so um, so the, uh, just a brief idea about the size of our cloud, um, we have about 9 to 10 k instances and we have about 16 k pods. And there is about the K security rules. Uh, this is only often. So as you can see, we're not very big, right? But in case this is uh, to the size of some of the class are uh, actually. Uh, um, going deep into Neutron now. Um, Neutron has uh, some configurations. This is really a type of a verb and a mechanism driver. And on the right, you can see how um, all the mechanism drivers um, corresponds to um, each network type. So a type driver is a type of the network. And the mechanism driver is basically um, how which mechanism you are applying to the network. And um, you know, the, the drivers, yeah, this is still a place where you can go on the config option looks like that. And the most important thing is Neutron does not support mixing of any anymore. You can only <coughs> probably use one of up to two like a mechanical driver. I will go into it later. So although it's a list, you're not supposed to just choose whatever you want and run all of them. Okay, how does uh, Linux bridge one of our driver and we will let 
what I will probably work, but we run with both of them in our cloud. So um, neutral, as you know, we have a neutron database, as a MySQL database. It has the resources, its own view of all the resources. It's the source of proof. Middlenet is the SDN, and it has its own database also. And the Middlenet database is a super And in there, there are some of the mirror of whatever resources Neutron has, in addition to whatever Middlenet needs to uh, do the networking. So to the database, um, when you do something, Neutron, say, I want to create a network. Neutron takes it, and if you have a plugin on Middlenet, we will also call the Middlenet plugin, and then um, Middlenet will do its own thing. So, and yeah, Middlenet has a representation of every, most of the stuff. So, what happens um, with multiple drivers? And on the hypervisor on the left, if you have a hypervisor with multiple types of uh, instances. There are agents running on each hypervisor, and if they are, um, your instance is binding to the middleman network, the middleman, the middleman agent would um, take back and figure out how to bind it. And if you're binding to a Linux switch network, for example, it will query the neutral database. So each driver uses a different DB. And how do we do migration then? Um, basically, what happens is now we are playing in yet another driver. And OVN also has its own database. So first of all, we need to create an OVN database. And it's a cool database because uh, if you know OVN, there's no fun, it's no fun, it's no fun, it's no fun. Um, Then you need to sync whatever you try resources at into this brand new database that you just created. Uh, there is a utility in the for You can run that and you can save everything. Then, after that, you will just switch the network over from the internet to over here. That's it, simple. The important thing is uh, what is switch? How does switch work? Okay. Uh, just to go down, uh, there's a bit of uh, differences between the driver. So, um, say from the network on the row, the network has a type. Uh, for the middle net, it supports the middle net network type. For OVN, it supports the Jimmy type. For the last which it supports the flat type. And then there's a port, which also has a type, right? The port type is as, as shown. And uh, this is simplified for therapy because uh, each case supports multiple types. And so we thought about oh, what, how should we do migration. Okay, so what we do, we will sync the database to OVN and then we will have a change over day. On the change over day, we will put neutron into read only mode so nothing new gets created. Then we do our incremental sync again, so everything that is there gets pushed over here. And then after that, we will update the neutron config to any go to the driver, and we can disable the neutron driver. And then we will restart neutron, and we will update all the um, with type and provider type, etc., etc., so that. Um, it corresponds to the OVN type, which is in the previous slide. And then what we hard reboot all the vector instances, because once you hard reboot them, uh, they, they do the binding, right? So that's not the purpose of the talk, because the talk is retard of teachers, right? <laughs> so this was original plan. And um, originally we tried to do that. In the year 2000, uh, using which was time. So number one step, sync neutron to OVN. Okay, I sync the dev, I sync the test, and then I try to sync the prop, 
for the pain. But it didn't sink. After all, I it didn't sink. And then I asked for help on the bug <laughs> tracker. And uh, so um, basically, what happened is uh, I opened the bug truck. But you uh, know what I mean? I see a um, small story. So. so I say, uh, hey, uh, we have this database. Uh, we have this amount of resources. We tried to say it didn't work. I created this fake data set for you, uh, a dump of neutron DB, and you take it and then write one thing and see whether it works for you. And then um, Terry um, from neutron uh, tried to run it and then say after three hours he ran out of memory, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, it's confirmed that it, the sync didn't work. Um, if, if you go to the bar, um, you see his ashes on it and he helped us to make it work. So my question two, uh, we did it around um, wannabe time. Uh, so this time, uh, syncing work also. <coughs> then on the change day, we put the new one in the break. Did the final scene to break to the wall. Update the new one complete. Okay. And then I restart new one, and then everything fell over. <laughs> The neutron just went to 100% CPU, I don't get up here at the 100% CPU, and then everything just kept flapping, and nothing came up. Um, then I had to go back, which is very disappointing. After all my work on the final delay, I had to go back. Then uh, there was a bit of crying. Then I had to buy uh, beers for everybody on standby, because it's a federated club, right? So we got operators from every institution on standby on that day to make this work and it didn't work. Here's for everyone from me. All right, and then migration three. And then this time we're thinking like, oh my god, like how, how do we do this again? Um, how do I disappoint the users at the time, right? And um, how the manager also asked like, hey, um, how, how come this wasn't picked up in the testing? I'm like, uh, yeah, can we simulate our production in the test? Like, um, maybe we need to buy so many computers. And like, there's no way. So how do we do it, but not with a big bank? Um, can we do a virtual migration? So we took a look, and we have some findings, right? So um, what the OBN was used for is uh, to uh, handle the cell service network, which is network specific for it, for the cells, which has an um, RC and an IP, and the binary cell system as well. And most of the cell service network are only contained within one project. So that means that every project we can operate them independently of each other because the network is contained in the project. Uh, there is our back sharing, but most of them are back. Right. Another finding is um, in the same project, instances mostly connect to one network. And what you really need is that network and all the ports that instances, that instances are binding to to be migrated all at once at one time. Other networks can remain on the old driver, it will still work. You just need that network and all the dependent stuff to remain. Alright? So um, one of the so that's basically what needs to happen in the great graphic that took me some time. Um, so uh, the blue one is uh, say you don't have instances are connected to it. What the user can do is you create a new network and OVN, right? And then everything still works. And then but at one point you just um, network remove from all the instances and then we'll add to the new network. Ta-da! Um, everything else um, just continues to work. Everything that's not here, but you use working, the only downtime affects those instances. Uh, you can actually keep the same IP, just pre-create those ports, right, with the same IP. Um, and the switch over will be quite, 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 quite um, low disruption because they keep the IPs, um, matters and stuff. Like, um, yeah. And um, basically, the network has a, to recap network has a type, and the port has a type, follows the network type, 
then what really matters is the bit type when you're playing game. So um, the drivers sort of can coexist, and they only um, handle the bit type. However, there are problems with uh, other country things like the router. Because you cannot create and join a router to uh, two networks by two drivers because the router is virtual and has no actual router that you create. So it will only exist in one of the driver and you will not be able to see anything in the other driver. So router you only should be active in one driver. And also the other part would be like uh, yeah, that's one. And folding IP is basically the same thing. The folding IP is, is translated to instance IP. And the folding IP network also sort of lives inside the driver, standard by driver. And you cannot have the folding IP network in both drivers. Um, similarly for the balancer, so as a special network which does the same thing. You cannot have the folding IP network in both drivers. So <coughs> this can't work basically. You can't have the instances bind to that and then bound to the other networks, sharing the same router you know. <coughs> so um, to get around that, we had to do a custom machine driver. So, Basically, what the ship driver does is, given some condition, use the internet driver. Given other condition, use the only driver. And um, what we decided on is uh, to do the decision based on project time. <coughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. So uh, I'll leave this here. We have a script and we just um, ask the user, hey, run this script. Run my script, switch to modern, switch to legacy. That script would set the project tag from the user and then ask them to wait because um, there are some caches involved and they have to 30 seconds before they create new stuff. And then you can run the check again and then they'll tell you whether you are or are not switched. And then you can switch yourself and you can check, um, run the script and then you will check for what are the resources that needs to be migrated. So what do you need to create? Um, and then they also tell them how to, uh, what you need to move over, like this instance. We need to cache and attach. So an uh, example of the script output looks like this. Um, when they run check, it tells them that this project needs to switch to the modern networking. And these are your things that you need to change over. Right? Um, it also helpfully tells you that um, you have some networks that you can use, so you can delete them. We don't need to migrate them. So many of them. I guess. Um, so yeah, we did a lot of cleanup for that. Um, and the folding IPs also, so the folding IPs so we are very good to be real. So what is this is uh, what happens um, for the migration? Blue line is the um, internet ports, number of internet ports in our cloud. And the red line is the number of OVN ports in our cloud over a period of time. The good is um, all the users, they can migrate at their own pace. So they manage their own downtime. We can avoid only one day of which that everyone is happy with. Because uh, there are so many users that it's difficult to coordinate. Sometimes, yeah. Um, the other good thing which is more for us is that we can monitor the load as the migration progresses. And if it, OVN is going to fall over again, 
can then force the migration, but I think I've stopped migrating. So at any point in time, we could force it. Right? Um, then there will always be each cases. So you think that, ah, you took care of everything, right? And then you run after the user. Then there was like, each case. So the first gradual migration, you get more time to debug all the each case. In the previous Big Bang, like if you haven't debugged it, H plays and big bang, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, yeah, so the H cases are not as scary. So what's the bad point about gradual migration is also the users can migrate their, their own case, which is exactly the same point as the group. Um, so we thought that it would take three months, and in the end it took about six months for everybody to finally manage to do their own time. Uh, I put a picture of this up in here because this is a story. Um, after we um, roll out the migration process, the user came back to say that, hey, um, I have a sensor that's attached to an airplane that will read um, data as the airplane is flying. And then when it lands, the airplane will transmit the data back to the our cloud to be processed when it lands. So migration is okay if the thing is blind, but not when it's landing. And they, it's not a big deal, but they hard-coded the IP inside the box in the plane. And they can't access it anymore after they have certified the plane on the plane. So um, here is a problem, and these are all the edge cases that you never think about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, who saw it there? And there are other hacks that we sort of did, which is um, because floating IP can only exist in one. Um, we sort of created two floating IPs of the same name. And depending on whether you are in the legacy or another, you only see one network that corresponds to your driver. So the user can still do uh, one stack. Floating IP create network, and it will work regardless whether you are in the hole or not. Um, and other things which relies on network coming for which you never know what you're coming the scripts. Um, but then you need to modify networks a bit instead of returning everything, you will filter them out. Um, also, we have other patches that do not sync those things that are not migratable to OBM as a router state can be migrated. No point really the same to migrate them. Um, so let's just learn from what we did. Um, Big Bang uh, is okay if you can um, accept on time. And um, it will save a lot you a lot of effort if everything goes well, right? It's just Big Bang go home. Go home. Uh, the gradual is possible. But it requires a lot of work. Um, it is not supported upstream, so uh, yeah. And before you want to get to OVN, uh, get to the latest version as much as possible. Uh, if you went to the Cloud Ferrell Sky Stock Infinity, you have the same point to And everybody who touches you will be singing the reason. Okay, at least you got uh, because it has a lot of performance improvements. And um, that's the OVM version that worked for us. And this is basically the um, details, right? Um, we patched a lot in Neutron. So, um, oh wait, I'll share, I will share, I'll actually share the slides so you can really go to that and get the coming IDs and stuff to check out what we do. Uh, on the first one, the goal is a uh, machine driver, and there's a synchronization filter for the sync the router, and then blah blah and stuff like that. Um, there's a uh, user opt-in to update the users, and then we put the opt-in because we kind of decide which, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, there are other patches of interest for running multiple times. So. If you want to be uh, run multiple drivers, 
neutron idea is uh, there was only one, one active driver. Therefore, we had many, many patches because at one point in time, we were running three drivers. Right? In that situation, we don't have any So, um, yeah. And so what happens in the future? Um, we want to migrate the last bridge to OPN because the last bridge now sees Z is not as experimental, which means it's not going to be supported in the future. I'm not going to, yeah, it's not as experimental, we need to be active. So, yeah, um, is there one driver to do that? Also, we just going to run one driver, hopefully. But as it will have scale, there's a lot of talks. Uh, this submitted out by the OVN scale. So I'm kind of a bit scared, but maybe a need regulation too. Also, and if I finally do this, I create the new stage over there, I'll submit another talk. Then we can come to the next talk. If I manage to do it again. Um, some wish this, uh, the current code, um, the sync is not that effective, especially if you're doing incremental sync. Because, um, so sort of what it does is it takes two sets and then it has to be in the X and delete accordingly. Right? Um, it's quite cool if you have the set is small. But if your neutron is constantly running, right? So let's say you take everything from each one and then it runs. And then you take everything from OVN. Yeah. These two things might not match up because time has passed. People have created new things since you took one of them. And it could be a problem then you and after you do the diff and then you update whatever you update might be gone by then. So then you're updating the wrong thing. Um, so the sync is yeah uh, we, uh, the sync might be some work. And um, the diffing part we found places that are not really efficient. We have patched it. Um, yeah, but we're not sure whether this will be well accepted. It's, it's just that we're going to be changing really hard to write. And we can submit it. But if there's no trial there, so we can test who wants this. Yeah, then we know why not submit that. Um, it basically drops a single for four hours to two minutes. And um, yeah, the wish list for the neutron over here that is like, please do not give our improving over here. It's really, really, uh, all your effort is really greatly appreciated by all past operators. Uh, yeah, that's probably concluding my talk. These are the links that I have, and uh, some attributions. So if you want to take further of the links, feel free, but I'll share it. Um, then, yeah, that's me. Thank you. Um, questions?